Hello oh, and welcome back to part four of uh, Voyage Islam's joke of response to me. God, the one and only true God. He sent me here today. Yeah, Allah is the one and only true leg. 68 verse 42 of the Quran. And uh, check out Sahih Bukhari and see what Muhammad has to say about your God Allah the leg. So you reject God coming to us in the form of Jesus to teach us how to live and act with one another. Yet your God is a leg, which is a body part of a man. And the Quran says that Allah has hands and eyes. But when you ask Muslims, is the leg of Allah attached to his butt? They say no. Meaning, you worship a leg. Congratulations. Because everything is destiny, Qatar, to teach you your book. Oh, I'm glad you just mentioned destiny. This means that all, of, and we as Christians don't believe in destiny. We believe in free will. However, we know that God understands what we will do given a free will situation. But he, it still doesn't mean that we didn't have the choice in the matter. You guys don't. Here's the interesting thing. You're, you're, um, y you said that the Bible has been corrupted. Well, you believe that this is the destiny of Allah, which means he caused it to be corrupted, which, meaning, which means we shouldn't trust him at all. Thank you very much. You don't know it. You really don't know it, like most Christians. Okay. Well, I proved you don't know the Bible. You said Satan beat the hell out of God. That's what you said. No, I said Allah, not God. That's, that's very, very ignorant. It shows your lack of, of understanding of God because there is no competition. Oh, let me guess. He's a leg, right? Between God and Satan. Satan has already been defeated. There was never a battle between them. Everything that Satan done has been predestined. That's another video. If you want to debate that on another video, I'll be glad to do it. Now... You say, uh... Okay, before you do that in your other video, I have a question. Is believing that Jesus died on the cross satanic? How can we trust that the Quran has not been corrupted? Simple, because the Quran was memorized in its time, and the people who memorized it passed it down to their children. Generation after generation after generation, until it reached us today. Every Muslim in their, in their prayer, we pray five times a day. We recite some of the Quran. You recite one chapter cursing the Christians and the Jews every day five times a day when you pray. And that's not a prayer even. Imagine if I sent you a letter and every day you called me up, bring, bring, hello. Assalamu alaikum, this is Voyage Islam. And you're just reading back to me what I sent you in the first place. Is that a prayer even? So you guys are so prideful that you pray five times a day, but all you say is nothing when you pray to God. But you're actually not praying to God, you're praying to Allah the leg. Or the idol Kaaba stone. The black stone. Now here's the thing. You said that it was by people remembering it. So you're trusting the words of God on people memorizing it? Well, wasn't it the same people that corrupted? Wasn't it same humans that corrupted the Bible? So what is to stopping somebody from losing their memory? We believe that it was written down and it was kept preserved by the will of God. Your God, Allah, it wasn't by his will. It was by his will that it would be corrupted because it was you who said you believe in destiny. So now you're trusting the testimony of men for God's words when it was men themselves that corrupted his books to begin with? That doesn't even make sense according to your own understanding of how God's books got corrupted or not. Every day. And there are Muslims who are Hafiz who know the entire book. There are many people learn the entire Quran before they're adults, so it's impossible for it to be changed. Right, they brainwashed little children, teaching them to hate the Christians and the Jews from before they could walk. Yeah, we know about that. Your next question is, why did God allow the other books to be changed? That's something called destiny. God put them here as a test. He allowed the other books to be changed because man has free will. You can choose 
You just believe in des destiny. How can you believe in free will if you have destiny? If you believe in destiny as well. If it's my destiny that God misguides me, it means there's nothing I can do to get guidance back from him. This is where you fail. Big time. So you need to erase the chalkboard and rethink what you believe. And you said that he gave the Bible as a test. Well, according to the Quran, Allah said that he trusted the Torah and the law with the Jews. Was Allah's idea to trust it with them, right or wrong, if he knew that they would corrupt it? Also, we're not talking about Allah testing somebody, testing their faith by offering, by, by bringing maybe some sort of temptation or um, Allah testing Abraham by seeing if he would sacrifice his son or not. We are testing God's words here. Why would he put his word, his offer of salvation to the world, to people he knows would corrupt it? You don't test your bank account with thieves. You don't give your PIN number to a thief and expect him to do what's right. We're talking about testing God's word here. And when God's word gets corrupted, we aren't the losers. God is. And this is why your God fails. All the corrupt versions, or you can choose the truth. And the fitra of every human being is to submit their will to do the will of God. That's the nature of every human being. And when they read the truth, they know it. They know God is not a man. They know God is not a cow. They know he's not some rock, some... Who was the stupid dummy who told you we believe God is a man? You believe God is a leg, however. 68 verse 42. You also believe that he showed himself as fire. Blessed is he who is in the fire, is what the Quran teaches. And showed himself as a tree, the burning bush. So when he reveals himself in a certain way in the Quran, oh, that's not God. Yet you reject Jesus, but your God is a leg, and you bow down and worship a leg. 68 and verse 42. I want you to address this. I don't want the next video coming up with attacking Christianity again. I want answers. And not these, you know, oh, well, the Bible says this and the Bible says that. You didn't even read the Bible. And your questions are really simple to answer. So, when we say that Jesus is God, we don't mean his body. Him and him as the man, Jesus is God. The way Christ, he put it, is like the temple in the Old Testament. He said, if you destroy this temple, you'll destroy this temple, and on the third day I will rebuild it. Just like in the Old Testament, the temple itself wasn't God, but dwelling in the temple was God. So dwelling in Christ's actions, what he said and what he did for us, was God working through him. And Christ, the man, submitted his will 100% to God. So we worship what Christ did for us because these were the actions of God. Bring salvation for his people. And so we don't say God is a man, but we can say he showed himself to us as a man to relate with us. Because we have a God who isn't just up there and we aren't his slaves, as you said right in this video. We are to be his slaves. But he showed himself of us as so he can sympathize with us as a man. So he knows what it's like to go through suffering and to show us that through our temptations, we can still be truthful to God and he will persevere us in all our ways. Okay, stay tuned for part five.